So you'll read again and again and again about the importance and the benefit of surrounding yourself with good company or holy company. And I wanted to take some time to speak to that because in my experience, it is one of the most important things. Um, I have been fortunate in that most of my life, I have been surrounded by good company, holy people. Um, it wasn't always the case, obviously so, but once I became an adult and I could make choices about who I spent time with, um, how I interacted with others, it eventually became so that I was able to recognize um, those good influences, those supportive influences, both spiritually, morally, emotionally, and mentally, and I was able to choose to be around them. So we're going to explore this idea a little bit today. And I want to begin by describing the fact that this wasn't obvious, meaning that before I became heavily involved in practicing Kriya Yoga and I met my Kriya Yoga teacher, Roy Eugene Davis, um, I spent time with the people that were around me. And I didn't think about it too much, although there were quite a few occasions where I ended up having friends that were uh, difficult alcoholics or drama queens or uh, manipulative and I didn't know any better, and so I wasted a lot of time and energy uh, in those relationships. But once I became aware of the philosophy of yoga and the practice of yoga, and in particular uh, the ideas of um, ahimsa or harmlessness, uh, I began to realize that I also had to practice harmlessness with myself, <laughs> which means that um, I learned very quickly that it was important to not subject myself to abusive, manipulative, difficult, or degrading uh, relationships. Um, and that took some time to figure out. So much so that I spent a few years being alone on the friend spectrum. I had my teacher, Mr. Davis, uh, Roy Eugene Davis, because I met him um, just a few years after uh, I met my wife. And while I didn't spend um, a lot of time with Mr. Davis comparatively, I did see him a couple weeks out of the year. I did have access to him via email. I had his books to read. And so that presence was in my life. And practicing what he taught, learning from his experiences, helped me to learn and to grow what it meant or what it means to be what you might say uh, spiritually mature. But also we had, I had the writings of Paramahansa Yogananda, Ramana Maharshi, um, Sri Yukteswar, Lahiri Mahasaya. And even though those individuals were not alive while I was alive, having their picture around, having their words, having their example, by thinking about that, contemplating that, aspiring towards that, um, that was also a way of keeping company with a good, um, holy people. And the funny story about this picture of Ramana Maharshi, uh, a friend of mine knew of my appreciation for Ramana Maharshi, and uh, he is from Ireland, and he sent it to me. And it took a long time to get here, but finally it did. And the first one I put up on my wall here. But I, I suppose that maybe I never told him that it showed up. And then, sure enough, uh, he wrote, he said, well, did you ever get this present from me? And I said, no, because I didn't know that's what he was talking about. So then he sent another one. So I have two pictures of Ramana Maharshi just like this, one here in my office and, and, and one at home. And the reason I'm telling that story is because of my my appreciation and enjoyment and devotion to... Ramana's teachings, um, even just seeing his picture or reading his words, to me feels like um, participating in that presence. And somehow, without even trying, these pictures you know, showed up in my life. And also, I've had books sent to me uh, related to Ramana Maharshi's um, students. He didn't necessarily say he had students, but people who learned from him. And a few other books, they just, they just came to me because of this sense of, uh, I guess, attunement to that. So while I was going through that period of change, 
transitions with friends and relationships and so on, um, I was not able to feel uh, a part of a community because I wasn't. Um, but I, I knew there was support there. And even now, the reason I'm doing this particular discussion is because I was just at home the other day and I was just looking around and seeing you know, pictures of Ramana Maharshi, Ramana's books, uh, Roy's books, um, Sri Yukteswar's picture. And it felt as though that I was benefiting by the presence of um, these teachers just by having their influence around. So number one, we have to remember that being surrounded by holy and supportive influences doesn't mean that you go down the street and can hang out with them. Uh, maybe you can sometimes, um, but it means that their consciousness, um, their influence is in your life and you appreciate it and you, you do your best to live in accord with it. Um, but also I wanted to share that when I say that I've been surrounded by holy and good people and how I appreciate that, not all of them are individuals that have any interest in sitting down and talking about the Yoga Sutras or talks with Ramana Maharshi or Autobiography of a Yogi. Um, many of them are just good, kind, caring people who care about themselves, others, the planet, um, who have good moral character. And in a way, uh, I might even consider them to be a little more spiritual because there's no pre pretense or um, need to keep something in their life to remind them to be a good person. They just naturally are that way. You know, they care about the environment. They care about um, others around them. They do things to support others while also taking care of themselves. They're low drama. Um, they do their best not to cause issues with others. Uh, so even in that regard, uh, I eventually found multiple people, good friends, one is a Methodist minister, um, one is a, a, a yoga, excuse me, um, a Qigong uh, teacher. Um, but when we get together, we just visit. That's all. Uh, even students that I have, I've been profoundly blessed in that regard. They're just good, kind, thoughtful dedicated, disciplined people. They, they embody what the Yoga Sutras and what the Bhagavad Gita teach. And why are these people in my life? Well, maybe it's just good fortune. Um, that's a possibility. Or maybe it's choices, because I can remember a time when that was not my norm. And I began to choose and decide um, whom I was going to interact with, whom I was going to participate in a relationship with. And I began to be a little more discerning. And I began to uh, let go of relationships that were manipulative or difficult or overly stressful or just constantly full of drama. It didn't mean that I didn't appreciate, love, and bless that divinity or that divine spark within them. But as far as a personality goes and, and life direction, um, some things and some people you just have to let go. In the same way that from a musical perspective, you know, if you want to play jazz music, well, you need to find jazz musicians. You don't go find a Celtic musician and a bluegrass musician and a hip hop artist if you want to play jazz. Now, if they want to learn to play jazz, maybe that's another story. Um, but it's okay to decide what is important in your life and then surround yourself with a consciousness, a presence, people who are going to allow that to come forth. Because everyone can make a choice. You know, individuals who want to be in your life, uh, if you are living a good, wholesome life, well then that might be a challenge for them to start considering well, what do they do? How do they act? What do they need to adjust? And that's something that I have found uh, very surprising because I used to be very judgmental and sometimes I still am. Um, but many of the people that I knew early on, uh, I've met them again as adults. And whereas before I thought they were dramatic and difficult and, and, and causing problems, now as they've matured, as they've gotten older, uh, they've become sincere, um, helpful, kind, holy people, good company. 
And there are others that I've met that haven't changed at all. And I still say hi and I'm pleasant and friendly, but it's not going to be a choice I make to spend um, lots of time with them. You know, you want to be a good gardener and you want to give your attention to the parts of the plants that are growing well and be able to pull out the weeds when it's necessary without being too, too concerned about it. So we're not in any way encouraging uh, sense of separation, cruelty, or aloofness. Um, you can still be kind and good and compassionate to others while being clear on what your boundaries are in life and um, what you want to surround yourself with. And I've often heard it said that you can tell what your state of consciousness is by the five people you spend the most time with. And I've looked around and I've paid attention to myself, to students, to friends, to others, and that really seems to be the case. Um, now again, keep in mind that the people you spend time with aren't necessarily the people you physically spend the most time with. Because you can be in a room with someone, you know, doing your work and uh, in your cubicle or at your job, and you don't have to get all up in people's business. You could be in a crowded room and have your mind centered on reflecting on the holy science by Sri Yukteswar or um, a talk that you read by Ramana Maharshi. And in that regard, in that crowded room, the, the individuals you're really in the presence of are uh, Ramana Maharshi and Sri Yukteswar. And this is also why um, I personally don't read too widely, nor do I go watch every video by every yoga teacher that comes along. Um, and people sometimes write to me and say, well, what about this yogi? What about that yogi? And I don't have any comments because I don't, that I'm not interested in this yogi or that yogi because I already, I already know, I already knew Roy Eugene Davis. I already knew the works of Yogananda, Sri Yukteswar, Ramana Maharshi, and those are so rich and full that that's plenty for me. <laughs> it allows me to stay focused because the more I'm able to understand what they say, the more discernment that I derive versus if I keep comparing the differences between this and that, and what's the difference between Qigong and Wu Wei and Kriya Yoga and Taoism and Buddhism and Christianity. Just pick your path and walk the path. It will lead to the same place. You don't have to worry about everyone else's road or whether it's rocky or whether it's smooth. Just stick to your path. <laughs> stick to your path. And so I don't, I don't read too widely because um, I, I deeply appreciate those teachers that I have, which primarily... In, in, in the flesh when he was alive was Roy Eugene Davis. Um, in the spirit, in regards to their works and their writings and their example, Shri Yukteswar, the Hari Mahasaya, um, Ramana Maharshi, Paramahansa Yogananda, um, and the examples of the people that are around me uh, in the community that are doing good work, that are um, being of service, that are attending to their meditation practice or their prayer practice and doing their best to keep their minds clear so that they can see um, the possibilities in the world while dealing with the difficulties on a pragmatic, logical level. So to summarize, the, the whole point of this little discussion is for you to begin considering uh, who do you spend time with? And it's always more important who you spend time with in spirit and in thought than it is in the phys physical situation because we're not always able to physically be near and nor is it necessary really. In fact, it's even better if you can get beyond the attachment to the physical form. But who do you spend time with? And are there things that you can do or choices you can make in your life to uh, improve your situation? And it might mean being alone for a little while. Sometimes you have to you know, clear out the garage before you start filling up with stuff that's actually a value for you, for your unique expression of this infinite consciousness. Because everyone and everything has value. Um, but we have to learn to be more discerning about our, our particular path. Um, and that's okay. But you might have to be alone for a little while. And you might have to learn to say no multiple times to difficult, manipulative, dramatic situations. And eventually, that boundary becomes clear. It's like the universe or the, the infinite finally says, okay, I get it. You don't really need this stress anymore. You've learned how to deal with it, how to create the boundary. So now let's start to introduce you to people that you're going to be so surprised that really bring you very little stress at all and tend to make you feel brighter, more uplifted, clearer. The people I spend time with, that I choose to spend time with, um, 
on a friend to friend basis, meaning there's no um, there's no distinction between teacher students, just people being people, although that's usually how it should be anyway. Um, every time I leave their presence, I feel clearer. And I've heard them describe the same thing because there's a mutual support there, a mutual uh, appreciation, a mutual um, respect. Um, and these people, a few of them are uh, Kriya Yoga practitioners and Kriya Yoga teachers. Some of them aren't. They work regular jobs. They do regular things. They don't sit around with their legs crossed and their eyes crossed staring in the spiritual eye all day. Um, they're gardeners. They're hikers. They're musicians. Um, but in time, you, you, rec you begin to recognize the spirit in all. And then you begin to appreciate um, that clarity. And others appreciate it in you. And you also begin to have the strength to maintain that space. So if you do meet someone that needs a clearer state of consciousness around, or a little pep talk, or maybe a, a gentle nudge, or a moment of silent compassion while they go through a difficult situation, well, you can easily and freely be that, because you are that. You are light and you are free. And this is, this is an important thing about the Kriya Yoga path that's often overlooked. Because being able to go into and explore that um, not only benefits you, but it benefits the whole of consciousness. And as you may or may not remember, there is a particular uh, verse in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali on the soul powers. And it's my, one of my favorite soul powers. And to paraphrase it, it is, by contemplation on friendship, one gains uh, spiritual strength. Now, of course, that's roughly translated from Sanskrit, and there's a lot of subtlety that probably could go into that or come out of that. But very simply, by contemplation on friendship or friendliness, one gains spiritual strength, moral courage. That's a profound statement. But it's one well worth considering and very important um, for properly navigating your uh, experience, your incarnation uh, in this world as a Kriya Yogi, but also as a participant in the processes of nature. <laughs>